Welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to see you all virtually once again. I am your host, Nick Face, and joining me today on the lovely computer screens are Phil Healy and Tom Smith, our regular assort and cast of characters. Welcome in, gentlemen. I would like to open up with our episode here today with talking about the Celtics. I think it's appropriate where the Celtics have now advanced into the next round. To my surprise, if you remember from our last episode, I absolutely torched them, and I said that they would not make it through Game 7. And I love it when I'm wrong. So I'm going to stick and be bold on my predictions for the rest of this series and say the Celtics will lose in six or seven games this series against the Heat. I will be the negative Nancy of the group. Gentlemen, what do you think is going to happen in this series for the Celtics versus the Heat? We'll go to Phil first. Uh, I don't know why you want to go to me first. Uh, but no, what I think, uh, I think this, I don't know. I think last game, I don't know if anyone watched game one, uh, which they lost in overtime. Uh, incredible game. Yeah, but Eric Tatum got absolutely smoked. He didn't get smoked. He got just blocked. He just got stuffed at the rim. It was amazing. It was Lit amazing. up. Um, and Lit Tatum up. Tatum had a great move to the basket to shake off um, Butler. But uh, he was just. He was just, he was at the rim, and he was above the rim. It was a good play. It was a great play, but also, I mean, but to say they lost it there, God, they had it. They had they were up by twelve in the fourth, and they just didn't know how to put uh, the game away. And I think that's what's been happening with them. And hopefully, they learn for this series of how to put it away. Because even in Game Seven against the Raptors, they didn't really uh, they didn't score a, ba- a a basket. They only scored vis-a-vis you know uh, foul shots you know from the line yeah. for the past like five and a half minutes. So they're going to have to learn how to put things away. And I, they hadn't, you know, hopefully game two, uh, which is, you know, tonight, uh, they'll be able to, to make it work. But I don't know, man. Uh, I, I think they can take it. I think they can do it. Uh, Gordon Hayward might be back maybe later in the series, but I don't think they need him. I think they, they've shown that they can run the, the floor and they can kind of almost not coast, but win comfortably. It's just they kind of take their foot off the gas. And then – you know, I don't know. It just happens. But we'll see. Uh, I, I, the Heat, the Heat are a good team. They're there for a reason. Everyone yeah. can shoot and play D. Very similar to the Seeds. And, yeah, I don't know. Tom, what would you think? I mean, I didn't really watch the first game, so I don't, I don't, uh, don't really know or have. Oh any well, you you fail. You you are just staying after school. That's just unacceptable. Like, come hey, on. Hey. Hey, I said the Celtics were going to win the last series, so I don't want to hear it. Don't you know that when I say something that if I say they're going to lose, you know what's going to happen. If I say they're going to win, usually the opposite happens. Well, so, now that you said that, it's going to it's going to switch. Good, then the Celtics will win now. <laughs> Fine. Then I'm an expert. I look amazing. But I, I just want to say that – this is all very confusing, uh, by the way. It is very confusing. It is very confusing. That's how we like to keep our viewers on their toes. You know, that's what keeps it going. I will say that I thought that from game one, just my overall observation was the Heat are a lot faster than the Celtics. That was definitely something that I could see from the distance from watching. And that concerns me quite a bit, specifically with Kemba Walker. We need to talk about Kemba Walker because now we're at, I think it's four games in a row where we have seen absolute disaster of a performance. I mean, that game one was atrocious for Kemba Walker. Atrocious. The Celtics aren't going to win without him. I'm sorry. They just aren't. So they got to figure out, is Kemba hurt? In my opinion, I think his knee is hurt. I think they're just putting him out there, which is fine if he wants to gut it out. But, Phil, to your point where you said that you don't think they need Gordon Hayward, I'm actually going to have the opposite opinion. I think if Kemba Walker – Tom, you look like a freaking bobblehead. Um, I think if Kemba, Kemba Walker is hurt, you absolutely need Gordon Hayward to get to that next round. I yeah, think it I, might – I think that's I true. think that that, yeah, that piece sure. is what I think is missing. I think he's aggravated, and I also think, you know, he's 30 years old. Yeah. Uh, that's the longest he's ever played into the season. And keep that in mind, everything else that's been going – you know, the whole 
the fact that they've been playing the season for almost like a year. Yeah, they have. Um, yeah. But no, I, yeah, I think you're right. Kemba's got to give them a better game. Kemba's got to give them something better. And he had a great shot with like a minute and a half left to put up, put them up by four. Yes, he did. Uh, but you know, he's got to do more of that. He's got to go to the basket. I mean, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I've said this on the show before about the modern NBA, but I mean, you know what? It could be say, said about any time in NBA history, but maybe it's more now. I don't mind kicking out to a, someone wide open in a three, but if you're up there and you're pretty much like uh, a pubic hair away from a layup, you might as well just lay it in. I mean, what, there's no I just real... ate. Huh? I just what? ate. No, never mind. Oh, never mind. I'll... <laughs> I'm sure it was pubic hair related, which I walked into, but... Um, Oh, that would not be something good to walk into, but that's okay. That's another well, I mean, show or another day. <laughs> depends on the growth, I guess. I don't know. Um, oh God, rated R today. <laughs> got to keep it. You got to keep it kept. Um, no, I. I it's, uh, Marcus Smart had one last series, I think, uh, where he pretty much had a layup, and the announcer it was great. The announcer's like, "Oh, I guess he's giving up that layup," <laughs> and just and he just kicked it. I don't think he kicked out to a three. He just kicked it out to someone, like uh, you know, by the circle around the the hoop. I mean, they do, right. they're doing a lot of that where they're just not finishing. And they got bailed out game one a lot. They got a lot of the benefit of a lot of calls. And I will say Marcus Smart had an incredible game. As usual. Of course he, he did. He's doing five threes. Playoffs. Hmm? Five threes I think he hit in that game one. Yeah. And even defensively. So was, that, Marcus Smart is the best player on the court still for the Celtics. And uh, it really shouldn't be that. So that's where I'm going to get into my next topic of conversation, and that's Jason Tatum. If he's a superstar and he's the next up-and-coming player, there is no excuse for what Jason Tatum – they had a 12-point lead in that game. That's when stars step up and win that game. Tatum didn't do that. He pretty much collapsed himself and self-destruct, and that is, to me, why as much as people want to blame Kemba – for that loss, I, I absolutely give Jason Tatum quite a bit of blame for absolutely turtling when the game mattered the most. Yeah, I mean, I think Brian Scalabrini said it best in the postgame show, not to discredit the Heat, because I think the Heat, you know, you got to give them credit for coming back and making runs, because any t- they could, you know, it's the NBA. It, it's all, you know. It, it could sna- change at a snap of a second. Yeah, especially with a, with a team like the Heat, or any team in the NBA right now that can shoot three. I mean, it's pretty much... You're back in it with, with two possessions. Even if you're down by 10, you're back in right. it with two possessions. Um, but what was it? Like, uh, Scal was talking about how they would just walk it up the floor and do a lot of iso ball, like a lot of isolated possessions. And that's what killed them. And Jason, Jason Tatum was uh, a part of that, Kemba a little bit. And, uh, you know, you can lay that blame on Brad Stevens too. I mean, part of it, which is weird, like I don't think Brad Stevens calls enough timeout. I don't think he calls enough timeouts. Uh, I'll be the first one to tell you. I, I would absolutely be critical of Stevens. I think the stupid ISO play that continues to get shoved down an opponent's throat is embarrassing. Mix the freaking play calls up. That's oh, one mean, thing that I thought. Like the last second. I, I didn't like the play call. I didn't like the play call at all. I hated it. I, no. I've absolutely no, hated, I especially, I've absolutely hated, especially, if the Celtics, say, have a tie or yeah. their one-point lead or something, and there's 20 seconds to go in the game. Yeah. They have failed right. on multiple times with Kemba having the ball or Tatum having the ball. Drive to the hoop. Why aren't they doing that? I mean, uh, Kemba did do that at the end of game six. That's right, and he didn't but get called. Go, so I, no, that, is but, that is correct. But I do – I don't disagree, and I think that – but I don't think that was a bad call, and I don't think it was a bad drive. It just Kemba couldn't put it in. And they say he got hit, but all right. Uh, I know, he, he's a big Kemba fan. He doesn't like that. Uh, but, no, I, one of the, that three-point shot at the end of regulation, game one against the Heat, I was baffled, too, especially since Marcus Smart. You had every chance to win that game you know, right there. But even, like, before, they were down by one with that, I mean – uh, with that great, I was going to say Jimmy Buffett, but no, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett play. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett play. He just parrot headed his way through it. Uh, oh God, why can't I think of his name now for the Heat? Jimmy uh, Butler. Butler, thank you. <laughs> I get. Uh, baby That's play. right. He's got it right. No, <laughs> uh, no little boy. 
Uh, he's going to scold you. He's going to scold you for not knowing oh, Jimmy Butler. Oh, Bob. yeah, because that's one of his favorite players, too. And he, he, likes, yeah. he likes his style oh. and his hair. Uh, tell, him to, tell, him, tell him to change to Jalen Brown. <laughs> yeah, actually, they both have a similar kind of cut. Um, yeah. But, no, uh, Jimmy Butler had a great drive to the basket. You can make an argument that, you know, but it's, I'm glad they didn't call it on Butler, but I was kind of pissed that they called it on Tatum. Like, why did you call that? Foul? Like, it, it's clear there was contact both ways. Like, that's a weird but Well, I think, I think it was pretty clear on the broadcast who the announcers were rooting for the most, and it was oh, all Miami all the time. Yeah, you could tell their excitement oh, no, level when Jimmy Butler drove to the hoop and scored. Oh, and a Celtic score again. It, it was – I, I think it, it was blown it, but I, I hear – I think they I, – I like Doris Burks, and I like – what's his name is all right, but I like the Van Gundys the most because they're mo the most – I do too. Yeah. Well, the A-team was on game seven. The A-team right. was on – so we got we got left with the leftovers. So. Uh, and I don't mind Doris. I think she's Second good. Second helpings. But, yeah, no, it's, Doris. I, mean, I don't think – the other guy is kind of bland. He's like uh, Marv Albert, Mr. like light. Marv Albert is Mr. Vanilla. Well, I mean, I – I think Albert's pretty great, but he can. Uh, but anyone, uh, there was a whole school of announcers. We'd go down this road, but there was a whole school of announcers who just kind of like, yeah, I know. That's right. He doesn't like Marv Albert either. That's no, right. He doesn't like the fact that all these announcers. Shame on you, Doris Burke. Shame on you. Oh, you're fired. No. I'm to disown him. That's what I gotta say. No, there's no hate in my house for Marv Albert. Even after <laughs> the legend, we'll get to that later. No. But um. No, I uh, I don't think they were too skewed in one direction, but I think what they try to do is pump up every play to make everything seem exciting. You know what I mean? They try to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, no. Now, and that on makes the announcer front, and I don't mean to change topics on it, but I think the absolute most insufferable Mr. Excitement level, which I don't think this guy has had any fun ever in his life, that's Matt Vaskersian when he calls a home run. Santa Maria, get the hell out of here. I can't stand that guy. Cannot stand him. For who who does he uh, do it? Is that on EI or no? Uh, that's ESPN. That's ESPN. fraud. Him and him and A fraud together. I know A Rod's Most, not bad on the call. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give him too much. Oh, stuff. but when you when you put when you put Vaskersian in there, Mister, he screams. He screams at the top of his like Aaron Judge. Oh my God! But is it it's like he's uh, never seen. He's never been happy in his life. I mean, I feel oh, bad for this guy. The only time he can get it out. Maybe he does have a, a really depressing life. He and must. His marriage, I mean, his marriage is crumbling, and he just wants to get it all out. Good then, God! I mean, when it's forced, it's like, dude, yeah. keep well, keep it in your pants, please. Well, bet to to that play to that Celtics play at the end of regulation. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, that three point uh, that three point shot was unnecessary. It was it's so it was very unnecessary. I, I didn't mind. I actually like. I don't mind Jason Tatum isolate because that's how. I mean, that's how the NBA is in a lot of ways. But I also like a lot of movement. I think that works too. But I think Doris you, Burke likes a lot of movement too. I mean, I guess I don't know what that means. She's getting a hit and run. I don't know. But <laughs> she a lot a lot of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> all over the place. But, no, I, I think uh, you just have him drive to the basket. Because at that point, because Marcus Smart, <laughs> once again, had one of the plays of the game where he got draw, you know, he got the uh, call foul uh, on an inbound, which means a, a free throw shot. I mean, and, ah, that's right. Yeah, and they were able to tie <laughs> the game. They were able to tie the game. And then – I went, ah, uh, too, when they tied the game. It was quite, it was quite exciting in my household. They, that, in our household, that's how we do it. Ah, uh, ah. The game. Even you just should do that to the refs more often. Ah! Well, yeah. Actually, the re I, I think the game was more skewed in Boston's favor as far as refereeing is concerned. But yeah. I, w I didn't think it was as bad on that game one as it was against uh, the, the Raptors. I will agree with you. At least the Raptors series was a little more what-the-heck kind of plays. But. Well, there were – I mean, Nick uh, Nurse had a, a bunch of words for uh, game one and two. I think more game one when uh, Tatum went to the line quite a bit. And yes, he, he wasn't wrong. I mean – they kind of favored him in the first game or two, but I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. I, I I think they could have they could have they also were up by four in overtime, you know, and uh, they couldn't. They hold on. I just couldn't put it away. So here's my thoughts on game two. What do the Celtics need to do to change their game plan there, and do they come out successfully tonight and get that victory to tie the series up one one? While Phil's I think uh, taking care of his son, Tom, we'll go over to you. 
I think they do. You think they do, John? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Phil, what yeah. do you think? You think the Celtics get the victory there tonight? No, I think they can. I think they can rattle off a whole bunch of wins. I think part of it is, listen, you just need- Ah, Jackie Bradley just got a hit. Oh, there you Sorry. go. My son has a future in broadcasting. But we have, uh, no, I think they just need to do what they were doing. Run, uh, run with the ball. Um, find the matchup and move the ball. Nothing can move, like Greg Popovich said it best, nothing moves faster than the ball. So, I mean, that's kind of like, doesn't matter how fast your team is. If you're moving the ball, and that's how they're getting looks, and they're rotating. And even on defense, they were doing uh, pretty well. They were stopping uh, a lot of their perimeter shooters. Uh, Miami has a, a lot of great perimeter shooters, and they have a lot of great passers, and uh, they're a little bigger. But I think, like, if the seeds keep running, and just outmaneuver them, I, th- I think they're fine. And I, I think uh, bench won't really matter as much. But, yeah, that, I, I think I – think- I will say that I thought the Celtics bench from game one, especially Brad Wanamaker, was just ter- tremendous. So He's my they favorite. had a really – they got a great performance there from him. They got some good minutes from the Time Lord, Robert Williams. And then you also had Grant Williams coming off the bench that gave you um, a nice little burst of – of, of speed, uh, the aggressive defense, and that's what that's what's needed if you know you need to spell a few minutes for Brown or Tatum or if anybody gets into foul trouble. Um, I hope that they can make this adjustment tonight and get back into uh, the series and go one one, and that would bring us to the next game, which would be on Saturday, which would be for Game Three. I think this series is going to get tied up at one to one. And I think that really the series is up for, up for grabs for anybody. It's going to be the team that has uh, the most prepared, changes their approach, adapts with different uh, schemes instead of ISOs, and, huh, and we'll see how the Celtics do. Now, I was surprised that the Clippers in Game 7 were not victorious. I was very surprised about that. So the Nuggets advance, and they will play the Lakers Crazy, um, man, crazy. So this is now the fourth time in his career that Doc Rivers is up 3-1 in a series, and he can't put it away. Does he deserve criticism? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I love Doc, but he does. I mean, how can you not? Yeah. You, have one, you yeah. have one of the best players in the last five years on your team. Yes, he has one championship. That was from 2008. But, dude, he might be one of the more overrated coaches there is in the NBA, especially if you can't win it. In a way, it's kind of similar to Stevens because Brad Stevens' record is only 33 and 31. I mean, he's no Joe Schmo. I mean, he's just a regular Joe Schmo with that record. These, these guys need to learn how to become, you know, a Popovich or a Phil Jackson or, I mean, of course, the best of the best, Red Auerbach. I but, mean, that easier said than done, but yeah. It is easier said than just, done. Hey, but, if he doesn't, I don't know why he doesn't pull that lever that every coach has and they refuse to do. Like, oh, there's uh, a Popovich lever. I, I I feel like I I feel like the uh, only reason why the Celtics even won 2008 was because of the roster they had, not even because of the coaching. I think I mean, it was both just the- series, both series that they had, I believe, in the early rounds. Well, they went. They, the Atlanta Hawks were the first, and that went seven games. That went seven. Think- they kind of weren't prepared, and uh, LeBron won seven. Yep, LeBron's Eastern Conference Finals went seven, and no, 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 six no, no. Games? no, 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 no. It was seven games for that was the second round. Cleveland was yes, seven. yes, yes. That's right. But Detroit, they went six in the Eastern Conference. Yep. But I mean, you can make the argument that Doc was a guy who could handle uh, all those people together. I mean, I mean, Doc did the job he needed to do, and I think Tom's right. The roster is there, and even think about it, like Phil Jackson. You know, how long did it take for him? He took a couple of years to get there, and he had two of the best players of all time on there, along with one of the best rebounders of all time for a second. Season. Yeah, no, it's it's um, totally fair. But, no, I don't I don't disagree. I think Doc Rivers deserves all the criticism he's getting right now. Uh, and I didn't, you know, I didn't watch all that game, but, I mean, just, I don't know, it's, it's a shame because I, I wanted to see the Clippers make it. So did I. So did I. I was actually hoping it was going to be Clippers-Celtics in the finals. Now I'm hoping it's it's Celtics Nuggets. I mean, we'll see, man. We'll see. I don't want the Lakers at all. I just I, I we all know my disdain for LeBron, and sure. I just I don't know if I can watch that. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll it'll renew the rivalry. I, I think we're going to see. I mean, hell, you could see a Heat Laker final of like uh, you know former LeBron team. You know. Um, yeah, you could. You totally could. You totally could. I mean, 
I'm enjoying what I'm watching, regardless. Speaking of enjoying watching, I do want to talk about some football as we change our topics here. And I want to talk first about the New England Patriots, who opened their season this past Sunday afternoon. And lovely picture right there, to, uh, Phil. That is Cam Newton in the background. And it was the debut of Cam Newton, a whole really kind of different look in Patriots team. And I guess the first thing I'm going to ask is for Tom on what did you think? What Loved do you think it. of this team? Loved okay. it. Um, Expand. Play. Tell me why. Yeah. Defense. Well, no, 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 I'm just going to leave it at that. I loved it. I'm going to leave a cliffhanger. No one's going to find out. Thanks. Anymore. Thanks. <laughs> um, no, I mean, the defense looked a, a lot, played a lot better than I expected. Um, a lot of new faces on the team. And uh, honestly, it didn't look very much different from the team's previous. It was uh, Phil. a lot of. Or Cam. Phil or Cam, whoever's in the ballpark. There he is. <laughs> Are you signing autographs? You're muted, Phil. Yeah, just signing, getting my son an autograph. <laughs> I'm at, what, what was that? I'm at Foxborough right now. <laughs> How are you? Um, Breaking news, uh, Phil is now the coach. <laughs> I finally put on pants and got out of the house. Oh, jeez. Um, no, um, yeah, my, I, my question just was, what did you think of how everything looked on Sunday? I, I mean, I'm kind of with Tom. I, I think, and I'll add to it, that I think this is more or less what – I think Bill wants a, like, Newt Rockney, <laughs> like, running game. I think he wants that team. And I think, like, uh, Dave Andrews not being there last year, big blow, uh, part of the offensive line not being fully healthy. I was actually kind of surprised he even played. Oh, yeah. No, but – I thought, yeah, because I thought he was going to take the year off too because I remember reading that at one point or hearing yeah. about it. But you know what? I, and I think Cam Newton, um, I think we'll see what happens. But I think it was a great first game. And we'll see if he continues. Like 15 rushes is a lot, it seems. But uh, let's see if his body yeah, can. Yeah, the key, the key for Cam Newton is health. As we've known over the years, there was some sort of uh, not alarming but concern about his hamstring. Yeah. And it does look like he will still be playing on Sunday. but And that'll be against the Seahawks. But I want to first think about what I personally saw in that first week. So I like Newton. I like the running and mobile quarterback kind of thing. He definitely needs to get on the same page with uh, the receivers a little bit more. Uh, we had a horrible fumble by uh, Nikhil Harry, which should have been another touchdown. So I don't fault that on Newton at all. They just need to work on ball security a little bit more. I like the running game for the most part. Um, I think, Tom, you said you like the defense. Now, we got to also think about this. That was Miami that we saw. We're going right. to see a whole lot different team on Sunday and throughout the rest of the season. The Patriots have the <laughs> toughest schedule in the NFL. Remind themselves that. You got Kansas City in there. You got San Francisco. You got the Seahawks. You got the Cardinals. You've got a whole lot of good teams. So you've got to play your best caliber football. Because if you remember last year, last year was more like a cupcake schedule. Last year they, they just didn't really have they didn't really have that many good quality opponents. Except we played year, like a cupcake really, team. We yeah. did, and that. That was that definitely had something to do with the leader of the of the cupcake wars. That was Tom Brady. So he just was Mr. Rotten Cupcake himself. Uh, I, think I do. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I do also want to mention that the game in Seattle is also uh, they're trying to figure it out. It might not happen, so they might have to find another spot. The air quality in Seattle oh, is not very good. So I don't know if they're going to play in Seattle or whatnot. So be on the lookout for an announcement about that coming up soon. We fire. don't know as of right now. You know, a fireball. Just light everybody up, just like 2020. It's perfect. Get light everybody lit. up. Get, 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 us the, get us the heck out of here. And that's when I was – Take me now. Manager. Um, Take me now. Wouldn't no, mind that. Would you say – back to the defense. I mean, I know it was the Dolphins, but don't you think, once again, back to when they won uh, in 2018-19 – uh, part of how they won that was, you know, running the ball on the ground and against Kansas City, uh, ball control. I mean, because look at the time of possession. It was like, what was it, almost 35 minutes or 30? It was. It was crazy. Yeah. And I think that's what's going to – I think they're going to try to cover up all their flaws, as, as Belichick, you know, he's pretty decent at, by just holding on to the ball. And if you're getting in that short yardage situation, 
hell, just pitch it to, or have Cam Newton go or just have like – you how many you got, like 20 runners, 20 running backs and halfbacks? Uh, now, which you – I mean, you look at the list of all the running backs they have. It's pretty insane. You got Burkhead. You got Michelle. You got Damian Harris. You've got Cam Newton. I mean, you got a lot of people that can step in it. E. Fuller or what, what's his name? That kid who had like four snaps. Like a really good, like scrappy kid. It was pretty good, pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I know who you're talking about. I forget what his name is. Harrison or something. No, name. not well, Harrison. Damien no. Harris is a guy who is uh will be coming back. But there is there was another kid. Hold on, I'll be right. Back. But yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, obviously the defense needs to clean it up a little bit. But uh, I also think, I also think Cam needs to learn how to slow down the game a little bit too. There's another big concern of mine on the Patriots, and that has to do with the special teams and kicking game. Nick Folk is not going to last here. He's just not. They need to come up with another solution. I don't know what it's going to be, but I, I do not want to see Nick Folk as my kicker anymore. I'm done. Well, I'm done. It's not going to be Gostowski either. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's, basically, <laughs> he's basically done, so he's washed up. Um, they do have – uh, there's somebody on the practice squad. I forget what his name is. It's something with an R. But they keep signing and releasing and signing and releasing and all kinds of stuff there. So uh, be on the lookout for some sort of new kicker. Uh, they might be holding special tryouts for you lucky fans out there. So maybe take a flyer and give yourself a chance. Who knows? You could be the kicker of the Patriots. That'd be a cool job. Um, anything else on the Patriots before we shift to the Braden Ayers? Huh. No. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. All right, so there's, let's talk there's, about there's that. Another, there's another name that I could call them, but it's not it's not clean, so I won't say it. Ah, uh, please don't. It's a family friendly <laughs> show, as we know. Uh, is it really though? <laughs> uh when Phil's not here, it's clean. <laughs> when Phil's here, it's a whole other ball game. <laughs> so while he's taking his siesta, why don't we talk about Mr. Brady for a second and? Yes, I got a chance to watch it, and it feels weird. I, that's just how I'm going to say it. It seems very, very different and weird. Truthfully, I don't even feel like I am watching Tom Brady. I don't know if that was you on Sunday, but I didn't feel like I was watching Brady. Not at all. No, I felt like I, felt like I was watching Jameis Winston trying to improve his football game. I, I actually thought I was watching Brett Favre at times. I really did. Yeah. Brady looks very old. I don't know if you saw him take his helmet off. God, he's gotten very gray in the past year. Must yeah. be a lot of uh, lot of hell going on at that household with Giselle. But anyways, um, well, you know what's even I, you know what's even crazier is it, it it took it took twenty seasons and assigning to a new team for football fans to see uh, Breeze versus Brady. Yeah, the last time that happened, I think was two thousand fifteen. Remember that Brady miracle ever- comeback. I don't think it ever happened. I'm pretty sure yeah, Brady was they I'm, I thought Brady was out that game. No, Brady, Brady that had, was definitely there in 2015. That was the miracle comeback with like 22 seconds to go. I remember that game quite a bit because Zolak was Brady's back. Brady's back. Shake and bake. You know, the, the typical Zolak kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um so that's the last time I think they had faced up and everybody's always puts Breeze and Brady as the Super Bowl matchup every year for the most part. Um, What I saw from Brady is a guy that is going to struggle with a new offense, which is Byron Leftwich's offense, not Josh McDaniels. Uh, He's a guy that's going to struggle with not having Belichick. Bruce Darians is a poor man's Belichick by all means. I think Brady also is going to struggle with Gronkowski being a shell of himself. That looked horrendous. Gronk has no business being on a football field. He is done. Done. I would be shocked if he even has 10 touchdowns this year. Yeah. No, it, it, it was just, I mean, it, it looked. If it I'm looked a Buccaneer a- fan and I was banking on Brady and Gronk to become Super Bowl champs, yes, it's one game. I get it. Brady, usually on the first game of the season, figures it out and they are fine. But. I think this is going to be a different story here. I really do. He, I he think looked, that he, he was he was playing like he did he was playing like he did last year. 
it, it didn't even it didn't even look like a preseason game. It looked like he didn't want to throw to anybody because he didn't trust anybody, and I don't think he he, he even will trust anybody. Um, it seemed like he didn't know what he was doing. Um, it didn't look like he really knew who to throw to, and it, it, it seems like he doesn't know, know the playbook still. The biggest struggle that I think that the Buccaneers are going to have is not because of Brady and their personnel. It's going to struggle with their team discipline. I think that's a team that lacks any sort of self-control and a team that is going to be one of the more penalized teams in the league, just like the Buccaneers have always been, and that's at the lead of Aaron's. I wouldn't be surprised if we're halfway through this year and the Buccaneers make a bold move and they fire Bruce Aarons. I don't know. I just I want to see more of the three stooge s type of like maneuvering on a kickoff return. Oh yeah, you thought that was entertaining. Each other, just, whoa! Uh, it's just kind of like a Marx Brothers. Yeah, that was that was crazy. They, they need they need our big a uh, big blow up bubbles to knock each other on, onto their ass is what exactly. they need. Well, I mean, when you were watching that, all I could think in my head is, oh yeah, just let it go out of bounds. Because yep. I mean, it was so close to the um, to the sideline. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna go out of bounds. And it just, you know, to uh, Nick and Tom's point, I mean, just undisciplined. Like, it, it's not the same team. Like, I mean, Tom can only do so much. Yeah. Even when he – and when he can't be saved by a good defense and or fundamental, you know. Head I really can't. I really can't be. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't – I think – I wouldn't I would, I would want to defend you. No, I mean, oh, listen, wow. if you get enough wow. – you get crazy. a good lawyer. I mean, just don't. Yeah. Stay out of people's yards at two in the morning. That's all I gotta say. Just stop it. Um, but other than that, no, I think uh, don't you? I don't know. Sorry, I just wanted to get on the Tom Brady thing. I think that first drive he looked decent enough. He got a couple calls go their way uh, as, as far as PI, but he had some good throw. I mean, it's just like you said, Gronk. I need, I'm like, oh yeah, Gronk's out there. That's all I could think. When I saw him yeah. take off his helmet, I'm like, oh, who is that mass uh, old man? But uh, Speaking of Brady and Gronk, did you guys see that video on Facebook of them doing, like, oh, the, be the best friend game? Playing the best friend yeah, they're, game? They're, they're, they're doing some weird oh. stuff. Gronk's yeah. also done a commercial I, for something I weird. Wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't suggest go. watching it. It was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. No, I might have yeah, to. It, it yeah, Gronk, was, Gronk just, just can make – Gronk's making money sleeping. on all kinds of endorsements and ads, and it's just – it was creepy, the commercial that I watched today on that. But that's just the Gronk side of stuff. Um, Get I will say – I will say that I think that we saw from this first game with Brady, a Tom Brady who is going to miss the expertise of Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels. That's, that's – I think going to be the moral of the story here for Brady this year. So, so you're saying, so you're saying it was all Bill and no Brady, is what you're saying. I'm saying it had a little bit to do with Brady, but I think it has a lot more to do with Belichick. It's a system. He's a Brady was a system quarterback. You take him out of that system, I don't think he's going to be, succeed. Yeah. I think that's what I mean, it is. I, I, I agree. I never, I never thought it was Brady. I, I mean, I, I thought it was Bill. Um, yep. I mean, you look at you look at Cam Newton, and he's, you know, that he he's kind of fit right in really and that's why i don't think it's out of the question to see the patriots become super bowl champs because i will tell you that i guarantee you this is the most motivated belichick has been in his career in a while and mm -hmm. i can guarantee you that brady is trying to get out there and prove that he can win without belichick he's just it's not going to happen it's not going to happen i'd be that's going to be surprised and I think that's how the chapter is going to end with Brady. I don't even think this is going to be a two-year thing. I think it's going to end after this year because I think Brady's going to realize that he can't do it. Yeah, I and think he, he'll be able to do something. It's only one game, but, I mean, I think, you know, the bulk of it probably is Belichick and just the system. But I also think, like, you yep. need, I mean, if that's true, then how come he didn't win at Cleveland or, you know? Well, it's been adapted over the years. That's why. Well, so, and but and I mean, it was, I mean, it was one. It was one game against the Saints, and it, you know, when the Saints are in your division, yeah. see you later. You're not going to make it anywhere. Oh, you mean? And let's not discount the Saints. The Saints Brady. are a very, very good football team. No, they have a difficult uh, division. 
I mean, well, no, I mean, so no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, we're Brady. saying it's one game and Brady looked bad, but I mean, it was one game against the Saints, and the Saints are a good team, and when you have the Saints in your division, you're it's going to be tough. Yeah, I mean, you, you're coming from a division, probably the easiest division in the league, going, to, and you're probably, I think you're going to one of the, I mean, one of the tougher, at least the top three division, one of the top three divisions in the league. No, it's an incredible point because he's never, you know, he's never had that. You know, you talk about like the tomato cans, tomato can quarterbacks in the AFC. Right. I mean, name one, name a rival one over his twenty years in the AFC East that really gave them trouble. I mean, maybe maybe Bledsoe. With the I mean, other, yeah. other than that, that's hey, it, really. Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning, one hundred percent. Well, the first not in his division, though. Not no, he in the was division. originally for the first. Oh, in the division. Oh, um, yeah. Nick is technically right for the first couple of years. And it's funny because they moved Indianapolis out of that division, I think, a couple of years after uh, Brady was in the league. But I actually forget exactly. Oh, maybe it wasn't. Ryan Fitzpatrick was there. Uh, Tannehill. Um, Vinny Testaverde. Vinny Testaverde was the biggest threat. He was. Chad Pennington. And yeah. who can ever forget Mr. No, no, Butt no, no. Fumble Matt, himself, Matt Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez. Mark Mark Sanchez. Sanchez. <laughs> Mr. Butt Fumble himself. <laughs> Um, which yeah, no, but G- Geno Smith, Geno Smith just let the world on fire. There's another. Wow, I'm really throwing out some names. I'm showing my age now. Um, no, but I mean, I think Tom, you know, and I, I think you're right though, Nick. To a, a lot of degrees, I think he'll find it like this isn't <laughs> this isn't the the Jedi he was. He, this wasn't the team he was looking for. No, I mean, and he was desperate. That's the team that he felt that he had to go to to. Uh, to continue his career. No one else really particularly wanted him. So that's where he's at. And and how about, how about another thing too? Did anybody see, uh, I think, did Fournette have like one snap maybe that game? Oh, please. No, I don't even know. That's a good point. Right. They only, they only, they only signed him to keep him from going on the Patriots. So weird. He only signed there to not, uh, they only offered him a contract so he wouldn't go to the Patriots. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. So, anything else that we want to mention here with football or basketball? Uh, I know Tom probably wants to talk about hockey quickly with uh, Tampa and the Dallas Stars now representing uh, the NHL in the Stanley Cup Finals. Mm-mm. Who are you thinking? No, nope. no, nope. no. Nope. Tampa series isn't over yet. Oh, it, oh, that's right. They're still playing the Islanders. Do you think? Do you think the do you think Tampa is going to lose? Um, it depends on whether or not Braden Point is in the roster. So what what are we at in that series right now? It's three to two Tampa, but both games that Tampa lost, Braden Point wasn't playing. They are oh, that's interesting. They are a completely different team when he is not on the ice. So he's their secret weapon, huh? It's not Kucherov. It's not. Uh, Stamkos, it's no, not when any Stam- of those when guys. Stam- it's- when Stamkos is on the ice, they lose. Oh, well, if you if you go back, this. if you go back in the years, if you go back in the years that they were in the playoffs, you know, if Stamkos was on the ice for any of the series, they never won. Interesting. <clears throat> so, what what do you want then? Do you want Tampa to advance? Do you, would I you mean, rather I want- the Islanders? I want Tampa to advance because I think it would be an, to, uh, an easier finals for the Stars. If the Islanders were in. Yeah. I, I want these I actually want the Stars to win. I want Dallas to win. Gives Stan, gives Tyler Sagan and Kudobin an, uh, cha- a championship. Another one, yeah. Yeah. So that's where that's where I'm looking at, at least on that end. Um, I know Phil, uh, you probably are neutral. You are Switzerland on the, this talk conversation. Because the Stars used to be from Minnesota and I used to like I actually vaguely followed them before they moved to Dallas. And I kind of – I feel bad that it isn't Minnesota, but it, all in all, I think the Stars franchise – I mean, because uh, did they ever win with Minnesota or they came close or they did? I think they came close one year. Yeah. But they won in Dallas. They Or they were in the Stanley Cup Finals in Dallas. I'm pretty sure they won. Yeah. I, and also, Tampa Bay, I'm not really uh, – there's someone I know who likes Tampa Bay and because of them, despite them, I don't want Tampa Bay to win. So that's kind of my, my go-to, spite. If I keep, you know, if that, I keep looking, 
Yeah, it's totally okay. if I keep looking. If I look weird for a second, it's because I keep looking out my window and onto here. Um, the weirdest thing, I have a cardinal sitting on my windowsill out my window right now. So I oh, keep looking awesome. at it. Hmm. So we have a guest. We have a special guest on our show. How are the cardinals and, doing? <laughs> really? I, I want to see more of them. I mean, they, they're great signs. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that I thought that was pretty cool. So that's why I keep looking. I'm going like this. Oh, it's, it's been sitting there. It's been sitting there for about five about five minutes now. It's I've fun. never seen a bird stay that still for about five minutes. Hmm. Very cool. Very very cool. But anyways, I'll try my best to zone back in here on lovely face the facts. Is there anything else that we would like to discuss here on a show? Because I want to finish with our typical. We were doing this before, you know, the shutdown. I want to go back to another completely neutral topic that's not sports related that we can get a chance to talk about here uh, before we wrap up today. We haven't done that in a while, so I think that'll give us a chance to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, there's not. I don't have anything else really. No, I'm all good. Uh, I Phil, hope, Phil, hope all good there. Hope time works. All right, so I have I have a topic on mind, but I will throw it to Tom first. If he doesn't have one, then it'll come back to me. We'll play it as a game. So, Tom, I tag you. Okay, back no. to me. I will no, go back to, to no. I, I, you know, I, I thought I had something unprepared. Unprepared. Yeah, whatever. So. But I, I felt it was fascinating this week. We have some of the, some regular TV shows are back for their season debuts um, for this 2020-2021 season. And one of those shows that has been around for years and years and years and years that has a little bit of a change format this year is Jeopardy. So we all know about, I'm sure, Alex Trebek's health concerns and everything. So I just wanted to throw it out there and just think, who do you think is going to replace Alex Trebek when that comes down the line? I don't want to hopefully, think about hopefully, that. Hopefully it, never, hopefully it doesn't happen for a, a, a long while, but any potential thoughts? Yeah, Drew Carey. No. <laughs> <laughs> over, over from crisis, crisis. Fraud. <laughs> no, maybe, uh, maybe John Krasinski. Uh, that's not oh, a bad no. choice. That From the office, yeah, that's not a bad choice. Um, I have a I have a wild card because I have some inside info in the game show community. Uh, <laughs> Ken Ken Jennings is oh, now oh, on staff guy. for Jeopardy as some sort of in uh, stagehand or assistant or something like that. Yeah. and hmm. I'm hearing the rumor that he's around so they can potentially groom him to be the next host. I of I honestly was going. How to would you that. How would you feel about that? I think it's great. Okay. That wouldn't yeah. be a bad choice. Wouldn't be a bad choice. Oh, he's, yeah. speak, speaking of replacing hosts, did you see that your uh, girlfriend there is hosting the Dancing oh, with the Stars? Oh, thank now? you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. What? Who? who? I knew. I knew talking about game shows in reality would get me on a tangent, and I need to. ABC. ABC. What the hell is the matter with you? You fired one of the greatest MCs and entertainers in the world that was nothing but pure class and elegance, and that was Tom Bergeron. And he came from, he's actually from this area, he grew up. April Native. April Native. They fired him for that gutless bimbo, Tyra Banks. What? Who is making those decisions? My mother loved that show. And you know what? She would she would be beside herself knowing that that jackass is now the host of Dancing with the Stars. That's a way to kill that program. Yeah, my hey. mom my mom's boycotting it right now. Did they she do I would watch too. it because of her either? Did he lose the job because of a dance off? No, no, no. they're just going with the change. That was this is going, their though. twenty thirty second season or whatever the heck it is. It's been around since I think two thousand five. They had about I guess, uh, three se I, three seasons in a year for a show and. They were trying to make a change to make a change for no change. I guess Erin Andrews was golfing with her husband when she got the phone call. Yeah. Oh, is she in it? Yeah. yeah. Well, she was hosting too. She was a co-host too. Oh, but that's just that's just atrocious. Now, I do. I don't speaking of um, no opinion. <laughs> speaking of some other shows, there's some other shows that are coming back for uh, 
on, on the game show. And I know let's make a deal and the price is right are two shows that tape with audiences and those shows have not started to uh, revamp or get ready I mean, to go I yet I won't for a while. I would imagine the same. And I, just a world without those kinds of shows. It's those, those are in, you know, big time, I think shows that have been around for years and it's, yeah. it's weird if, if those shows ended up getting canceled. I mean, that, that's, that's sad. That's well, very I don't, sad. Like, I don't know if they ever get canceled, but I think they'll just be on hiatus for a while. I mean, they already have been, I guess, but I mean, yep. they have plenty of episodes to rerun. Uh, you, you know, the, the price is right has been on CBS since uh, 1972. So, I mean, wow. that's, that's a very, very, very long, almost 50 years of that yeah, program. Just shy. That's kind of crazy. So that's kind of weird not being able to see that. Um, on another note, there are, I don't know if you know on, I guess I have to say ABC again, as much as I don't want to say ABC. Yeah, well, you get um, what's going on? I just, I just, uh, they, they're just trying to change things for the sake of change. Um, I, I did like their Sunday night feature that they were doing with, um, they had Family Feud, Celebrity Family Feud. They had, a, I think, Pressure Luck. Uh, match game or whatever the heck it was for yep. their their shows and those shows are coming back for their new season but it's going to be done in a different kind of social distance format so i'm curious to see how how those look and all the one show that i heard that's new and coming back i don't know if any of you remember remember this show from years back it was supermarket sweep that show is now coming back so huh? that'll be cool i just do not like the host i don't like who they named as the host leslie jones Leslie Jones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Oh, SNL. No, she yeah. She was in she was in uh, Ghostbusters, the female version. She's in a yeah. bunch of funny sketches um, on the show. Well, one of them, actually, her stand up's pretty good, too. But um, was it? Didn't Guy Fieri have one? Doesn't Guy Fieri have a supermarket suite? Yeah, minute, minute to Win It. Oh, okay. Yeah, Minute to Win It, he had. Minute to Win It. Yeah, Minute to Win It. <laughs> He's taking a picture. Wow, taking pictures live on TV right now of, a bird, of a Cardinal. Well, I will say. I think it's fascinating. I just think it's fascinating. I, and I'll, I'll share the picture on my Instagram later. But this bird is a cardinal, and it has been sitting on this poach at my fence by my window the entire time the show has been airing. And if that is not a sign from above, I don't know what else is. That's just remarkable to me. Remarkable. Pretty cool. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention back on topic was <laughs> we're all over the place today. Uh, the Weakest Link is coming back. That was a show yeah, that was yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And, Jane Lynch uh, is going to be the host of that. Host. Uh, I like that. Yep. yep. I, I recommend if you have, I think if you have Hulu, I think it's on there. Jane Lynch was on this great show that was on Showtime. Uh, it, oh, now I can't remember it. Now I'm just going blank. I know. I'm Phil, right now. Phil, oh, Phil. You must have really, You must have really liked it. Party down. Party down. Uh, and um, Yeah, there are a bunch of great people on it. I recommend it. It's only, I think, 10 episodes in all. I think 10 or 20. It was only two seasons, and they're pretty good. So I will definitely give that a chance to check out. It's fun. That sounds great. Well, anyways, that wraps up our next step, our episode here of Face the Facts. We hope you enjoyed that little tangent we went on at the end about host changes and uh, rants and complaints and all that kind of lovely stuff. We'll try to do that a little bit more for you because it is definitely entertaining. And we try to had, had to get you on a rant. I had to. We all need a good laugh at the end of the day. And if we can provide that to you in some capacity, whether it's through my stupid humor, you are more than welcome to laugh at anything that you would like and enjoy. Uh, final things that anybody would like to mention today before we sign off. Stay safe. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'm going to say goodbye, Mom. Apparently, she wanted to be in the audience today. So thank you for watching, everybody. And we will see you next time here on another episode of Face the Facts. Goodbye.